16, which was last week. Uh, North Carolina had 93,426 laboratory confirmed cases of COVID-19, 1,588 deaths. And y'all heard the numbers I read earlier, and that has increased. As of the date of this order, North Carolina daily case count of COVID-19 continued to increase. The percent of COVID-19 tests that are positive remains elevated. Uh, 10 COVID-19 infections in North Carolina are likely to continue for the next several months and into the fall and through at least election day. In-person polling places by their very nature are venues where people may, without appropriate measures, congregate often in close quarters and sometimes for prolonged periods of time. As a result, it's critical that measures be taken to reduce the risk of COVID-19 transmission and to ensure the maximum extent possible that voters are able to exercise constitutional right to vote without undue risk. Are y'all hearing me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, are, are everybody comfortable with our distance? Um, um, Executive Bill made this order on Friday. She said, experiences from other states that have conducted elections during the pandemic are instructive or destructive. <laughs> in Wisconsin, for example, following primary election, April 7 research at the University of Wisconsin, Ball State found statistically and economically significant association between in-person voting and the spread of COVID-19 two to three weeks after the election. In addition, the study found that con consolidation of polling locations and relatively few absentee votes increased positive test rates two to three weeks after the election. The study finds suggested that taking measures to reduce crowding and polling places is important to minimize the risk of COVID-19. It also has been publicly reported that in Georgia, the primary election held on June 9, there were widespread problems that led to lengthy delays and disruptions that were caused by the introduction of a new voting system, the mass exodus of polling workers, fearing coronavirus exposure, and the forced closure of polling places due to insufficient staffing and a crush for absentee ballot requests. And somebody put a question mark about on Circle 13, we need to discuss that in depth. In several locations, these problems led to hours long delays in in person voting on election day. Further increases, both inconvenience and risk to voters and poll workers. It has been publicly reported that Nevada and South Carolina also experienced similar delays and disruptions. We're going to move on to 14. On June 22nd, 2020, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention issued interim guidance to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in election polling places. The CDC guidance encouraged election officials to, one bullet, ensure the poll workers who are sick has tested positive for COVID-19 or have recently had a close contact with persons with COVID-19 stay home. That is a given. Provide an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, excuse me, with at least 60% alcohol for use at each step in the voting process where voters interact with poll workers after using voting machines at the final step. Put a question mark by that bullet because we need to discuss that. Use physical barbaric. Recommend and reinforce the use of face covering while in the polling location. Ensure adequate supplies, including soap, hand sanitizer, paper towels, tissues, disinfectants, wipes, and no touch trash can, cans to support healthy hygiene. Disinfect all surfaces where possible. Encourage voters to stay at least six feet apart, increase the number of polling locations available for early voting and extend hours of operation at early voting sites. Maintain and increase total number of polling places available to the public on election day to improve the ability to social distance. Question mark. Minimize lines as much as possible, especially in small indoor spaces. Limit the number of voters in the facility by moving lines outdoors if weather permit or using a ticket system for accessible uh, facility, access to the facility, I'm sorry, question mark. To ensure, ensure sufficient space for social distancing and other measures, 
identify large facilities to be used as polling places. Notify voters of changes to polling operations, including the availability of alternate voting options that minimize contact. Offer alternatives to in-person voting. Offer early voting or extended hours where voter crowds may be smaller throughout the day. Offer alternative voting options that minimize exposure between poll workers and voters for voters with symptoms, those who are sick, are known COVID-19 positive. The COVID-19 pandemic is a major health emergency across all regions of North Carolina, affecting North Carolina statewide and United States wide. Because the COVID-19 pandemic affects North Carolina across local jurisdiction boundaries, it is critical that health and safety measures instituted by county boards of elections not conflict and or coordinate with statewide measures to ensure adequate protection for lives of North Carolina voters. Therefore, I have determined it is necessary to take action to give direction to the county board of elections to ensure adequate protection for the lives of North Carolinians. The state board and county boards of election are already well underway with actively preparing to conduct the November 3rd, 2020 general election in accordance with state and federal law. For example, county boards were directed to send one-stop early voting plans to the state board by July 31, 2020. That is the reason we had this meeting scheduled initially. But some counties have already submitted plans. However, the COVID-19 pandemic is disrupting and will continue to disrupt the normal schedule for this election cycle in every county in the state and has impaired critical components of election administration. These impairments include significantly increases the difficulty for county boards to identify and train adequate number of poll workers and one-stop workers who can safely assist with in-person registration and voting activities and allow for voters to cast ballots without subjecting themselves to serious health risks. To address these impairments, County Board of Elections can take action that reduce crowd density, shorten the time voters spend in line and at polling locations, and improve sanitation and cleanliness. Question one. General statutes authorize me to exercise emergency powers to conduct an election where the normal schedule is disrupted by a cat catastrophic catastrophe, I'm sorry, arising from natural causes that has resulted in disaster declaration by the President of the United States or the government while avoiding unnecessary conflict with the laws of North Carolina. The emergency remedy measures set forth here are calculated to offset the nature and scope of the disruption from COVID-19 disaster. After consultation with the state board, I have determined that the COVID-19 health emergency is a catastrophe arising from natural causes, a naturally occurring virus resulting in a disaster declaration by the President of the United States, declaration of state of emergency by the government, and that the disaster has already disrupted and continue to disrupt the schedule has already impacted and continue to impact multiple components of the election administration. State public health officials have cited data that show that the continuous spread of COVID-19 within North Carolina is on an upward trend. We all agree. They have informed me that the spread will likely continue for at least several months through the November 3rd, 2020 general election day and across the state. I have determined that this disruption to administering the November 3rd, 2020 general election has already affected and will continue to affect the entire state in all contests. As of the date of this order, I have determined that pursuant to North Carolina General Statute, it is not clear when or if the disruption to normal schedule for November 3rd general election will end. Because of the advanced planning necessary to address multiple components of election administration, I have determined that certain emergency measures need to be identified now to ensure that there is adequate time to meet state and federal deadlines particularly in light of the upcoming deadline for county boards to submit their one-stop absentee voting plans. Impact aspects of election administration include procuring necessary supplies, ensuring adequate staffing, and securing adequate facilities and infrastructure. <laughs> because there is a higher risk of transmission of COVID-19 virus indoors and in areas where people come in close contact 
The Save Board and County Board of Election must make arrangements to ensure the existence of safe in-person voting opportunities and safe spaces for election workers so as to reduce to the maximum extent possible displacement of voters by election workers. I have determined that the high risk of transmission and close contact also requires that the State Board and County Board of Elections ensure that there are sufficient voting locations and election workers to ensure that every eligible North Carolina community has the ability to vote without endangering herself. Without sufficient measures to ensure that all eligible North Carolinians can vote safely, the integrity of the election may be compromised. To avoid the disenfranchisement of the eligible voters and protect the health and safety of election workers and voters pursuant to, I have determined that the State Board and County Board of Elections must put in place measures that will be taken against the contract and spread of COVID-19 while voting is taking place. Number one, based on the foregoing findings conclusion by the authority vested in me as executive director, all county boards of elections shall open each one-stop early voting site in their county for a minimum of 10 hours total for each of the first and second weekends of the 17-day early voting period. The county board office are in lieu of site that is open only during regular business hours shall be excluded from the requirements in this paragraph provided that there is at least one other one-stop site in the county. Each county board of elections shall open at least one one-stop early voting site for 20,000 registered voters in the county, as reflected in the voter registration records as of July 11, 2020. The county board of elections may apply to the executive record for a waiver of the requirement in this paragraph if it is proposed plan is sufficient to serve the voting population, maintain social distancing, and reduce the like the likelihood of long lines. Any county board of elections that only has only one one stop early voting site shall arrange for a bag of site and a bag of staff in the event that its site must be shut down or in the event that there is a lack of sufficient sufficient staffing during COVID nineteen. Four, any county board of election may open the site earlier than 8 a.m. and or may stay open later than 7.30 p.m. Provided that the sites, other than the county board office or a new site, if only open regular business hours, are all open at the same time. All county boards of elections shall post visible signage outside each one-stop site to inform voters of the location and hours of all one-stop sites in the county so voters can assess why abiding by social distancing guidelines outside the polling location where to go to a different location. If a county board of elections learns that one of its polling places for a precinct is inaccessible because of COVID-19 pandemic, the county board of elections may request a transfer of some voters to adjacent precinct. The request is subject to approval by the executive register and shall explain why the partial transfer is necessary due to COVID-19 pandemic and how the proposal is consistent with the criteria. The request must be received at least 45 days prior to the election, no later than 30 days prior to the election. The County Board of Elections shall mail a notice of precinct chain to each registered voter who, as a result of the chain, will be assigned to a different voting location. All County Boards shall provide for social distancing and voting sites, including by applying appropriate markings and providing appropriate barriers, including barriers between election officials and voters at check-in. Provide for frequent sanitation of common surfaces, hand sanitizing, and single-use ballot marking devices. Require that election officials wear face coverings and make face coverings available to voters who do not bring down. Make note of this last one. Voters will not be required to wear a face covering to vote. Require face shields or petitions and gloves for all election officials where appropriate for the task. The State Board shall provide a centralized location on its website for precinct consolidation information throughout the voting period. As Executive Director, I will disseminate additional guidance on the measures described here in numbered memos.
If any provision of this order or this application in any personal circumstances is held invalid by any court of competent jurisdiction, this invalid and validity does not affect any other provision or application of the order which can be given effect without the invalid provision or application. To achieve this purpose, the provision of this order are declared to be severable and 11. This order will be in effect immediately and remain in effect through 11.59 p.m. on November 4, 2020, unless repealed, replaced, or rescinded by another emergency order, which will be other emergency order may be issued to address other components of the election issues that may be incurred as necessary. Okay. I got this Friday evening. I didn't mail it out to y'all. I didn't send an email out to y'all. I thought we could come and discuss it today, but maybe we already had an email call today. Okay. There are 20 litigated cases right now in reference to state of the elections. Right now. So, uh, uh, we had a uh, uh, a huddle call with the, the directors and some staff uh, yesterday morning at 8 30. We're meeting with the executive director early Monday morning at 8 30 until election day or until something changes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, as she was talking yesterday, I made a few news. Lisa, I don't know if you made it or not, but you may can help me. She says two weeks before the last Saturday or Sunday or combination, 10 hours each weekend. Um, and she said you could do it from 8 to 6 on that Saturday and not be open on Sunday or you can open on Sunday. That's not my call, that's y'all call. I'm just saying what she said. She has asked you all to apply, to supply 10 hours of early voting for the weekends that are not required by law. That's the first weekend of the One Stop Site and the second weekend of the One Stop Site. The last weekend is applied by law and we're open from 8 to 3 o'clock. And, and that cannot be changed. Okay. So we're talking about two Saturdays, 10 hours. Yeah, that's what y'all say. Yes. <laughs> but she is asking for 10 hours for those those two weekends and she said you can break them up how you decide to do it but she said if you want to do it one day so she's not mandating how you do it she is asking you to do 10 hours okay. i think the 10 hours is almost going to be once we have to do it but we decide how we do it right right and she said part of her executive order and, and we'll read back through that but as we read through that, did y'all understand that she said that she's she requiring us to do two ten additions? She said that she was asking. I thought it was a requirement. Did she say directly? I thought it was a requirement. So she said, well, I was reading through it and I was reading fast, but that's what I thought I read. Anyway, we'll follow up on yeah, that. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll find it. Also, she said, that 20,000 uh, of fewer registered voters, you can do one site. Yeah, do a site for every 20,000. Right, she said, there are 20,000 less, you can have one site. But more than 20,000, if you have more than 20,000, you want one site for every 20,000 votes. Let me ask you this. Yes, ma'am. Are you talking about 20,000 per precinct, or you're talking about the total? Total. How many we have? We got a total of 34,602 as of July 20th. Break the vote. Yes. Okay. Let's try to. Thank you. I'm glad you. Mm -hmm. um, and that includes everybody? Yeah, that's, that's, that's all we got. It's 34,602 breaks the vote. But we did not have this one site. Oh no! I would have landed this. We ain't never had one. Don't you know? Never had one say something. You know what I'm saying? Okay, all right. Now, all right. Let's uh take it a few more. So I made some notes. More than twenty thousand. We have thirty-one thousand at least two sites. 
because you had, she said, you got 31,000 because you made a new two side. What number is that? I, that was a note that I made. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so then she came up with some, um, some what if participating numbers. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I just noticed the word mandates. Where is that at? Which is the must. Where is that at? Okay. On the bottom of this. Okay, we ain't gotten that one. Well, actually, it's in there. It's in there. It is in there? Yeah. Oh, what page is it? Uh, it's one page one on the, on the second set of. Uh, you know, that was yeah. the second bullet that I had that's not included in there, but you're right. Okay, no. so it mandates all. Oh, all the mandates. Oh, yeah. Must yeah. open voting sites for at least 10 hours on the weekend. 10 on the weekend. Um, 17, 18. Okay, you're, you're absolutely right. And that's what I said. I thought it was mandated. Yeah. And I did. Okay, very good. But I don't want to get ahead of that document if you could. But what this document is, is basically uh, 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 a summary of this document. Okay. The second document is a summary of the first one. Right. right. All right. So she put together some some hypothetical numbers based on in um, in uh, the last uh, three presidential elections. She came up with some percentage of uh, absentee votes. And so she was saying that if you have a certain amount of absentee votes by mail, a certain amount of early votes by one stop, what you're going to have left for election day, which is going to be the major problem, we all think will be our major problem because it's going to be election day. Okay. Um, but um, the more. Uh, absentee by mails that we receive, the more early votes we receive, the better opportunity we're going to have long lines on November the 3rd night and have the problems that some other states have had. Okay? Mm -hmm. She said more people are needed on election day for work. We all know that and that's a good one. If we can get our numbers down, then election day will not be so bad. I agree. Uh, she did say that there has been some uh, COVID cases within the state election family. So I'm not sure whether it was in the state office or in the election state and county office, but there have been some. And so, um, I'm on the next page, I mean, that, that didn't go, but let me go. She talked about map team, multiple assistance teams. We had, we had a multiple assistance team in uh, March, before the March primary. And what that, those person were, a person from each party uh, was uh, trained and assigned to go into the you know, nursing homes can assist when they have not worked out along with Mandy Cohen and the DHS, they have not worked out the logistics of that just yet. Okay? And that's going to be a tough one. Yeah, because family can't even go in. Yeah. Um, Matt team direction should be out by August 1, is what she's telling us. Care money, and we'll get into that, the care money. Y'all probably seen that before too. Can be used for additional money for extra Saturday or Sunday hours. If the voter does not want to wear a mask, they are not required to wear a mask. And we cannot require them to wear a mask. I thought the government had mandates. Yeah, the governor did. But she's saying to us is that if somebody comes in, that's not our authority to tell them the governor said we need to wear masks. Um, uh, if 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 any staff or any poll workers or anybody uh, has any type of symptom, they are to alert us know when they are not to work, even if it's election morning. Are we checking temperature? 
I don't think I've seen anything about that, but I'm sure we're not. I think we're going to take the temperature of our staff, our poll workers, but not votes. Okay? Okay. And uh, we're talking now, but you know, things will could very well change. Um, uh, we're probably going to have a lot more curbsides. Um, we can do temperature checks for poll workers. I didn't make that note. You made that note, Lucy? Okay. Thank you. But not the voting. I didn't make that note. Okay. All right. So I think those are basically the notes that I could keep up with with her as she was going through that. Okay. So I, I made some question marks on page three was the first one, I believe. Wasn't it right here? No, 13, page two. Mm -hmm. 13. Yeah. Okay. Um, some of the new uh, states that had um, problems was part of was dealing with the voting equipment. Uh, we did test and use our DS200 in the March primary, and I feel very confident that we should not have. I'm not going to say no problems, but we should I'm not going to have any major problems with the voting machine. All machines are subject to some type of problem in. But we had limited problems in the March primary. Thank God. Uh, very limited. Okay. All right. The next one on page three. Um, the state board, Karen Brenson Bill, the executive director, is providing us with a lot of these equipments that we're going to need for the, for our election day and early voting. She's trying to order what we're going to need and we're going to pay for, but a lot of this stuff is being gifted to the state mm -hmm. and uh, it's not through no, uh, um, no interest group, I think the best way to put it. But uh, I think the legislators are providing us with some, uh, her with a lot of stuff that we're going to need and she's getting it. And once she get it, she's gonna send it down to our emergency management. And then we'll be including the mask. They've ordered our mask for us. They ordered the hand sanitizer. And a list of other things. I'm just giving y'all a brief synopsis. We'll be all in front of y'all. Um, page four. Maintain or increase the total number of polling places available to the public on election day to improve the ability to social distancing. We have 21 precincts in, in uh, Edgecombe County. They're very uh, disseminated across the county. Um, uh, based on my thought pattern, I think we're okay in reference to that. Uh, we got four sites in Tarboro. We got five sites in Rocky Mount. Uh, and then we got all the other little areas, a site there and a site here and a site there. And it just worked well down through the years. We, uh, again, I mentioned in our first meeting that we had, that we had the longest line was in 28, 2008, general election, because we had our longest lines for presidential election. And that was simply because there was a mad rush among all the voters. Okay. Um, and I'm just telling y'all this. Y'all tell me what we're going to do. Uh, the next question mark, I put limit the number of voters in the facility by moving lines outdoors and weather permits and using the ticket system for the access to the facility. <clears throat> Each precinct, my plan, and this is all in a plan. I don't have it written down there. But my thought pattern: we're gonna have one person at each precinct that's gonna be designated for line control. And the number of people that can come in and out of that voting site at the same time, as well as early voting. Um, along with, with, with that, um, uh, if weather permits, um, we're going to do the best we can not to have um, long lines in reference to it. Okay. Um, 
see this. Yes, sir. One more time for the record. Okay, I see a uh, point of here that says also alternative to in person voting. Have you thought of that yet? What number is that? Yeah, it's yeah. 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 a bone. Yeah. So yeah. Under... Which one is that? Hmm? Uh, page four. Page four. Bullet the book 15. Uh, let me see what uh, all for alternative to in person voting. That would be absentee by me. That's all, that's all I am. That's all I am. Anybody, anything else got to come through the legislators, the lawmakers. Yeah, we don't, we don't have those authority. We can't change that. I mean, she gave us an executive yes, order. That's her executive order. gives us the option. I, 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 John, I ain't going to argue with you. But, I, but listen. Am I half right? I don't know. John, you not half right. I don't think so, do you? <laughs> John. This alternative is alternative. I, it is. It is. But we alternative within the enough. law. We don't have within enough. the law. Within the boundaries of this, the law. This is a poor. I got you. Poor alternative. I got you. I'm with you. Okay. I'm with you. All right. On the record. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you could call it curbside. Alternative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we already got it. We already <laughs> offer it. Yeah. We already <laughs> offer an absentee by me. I was just saying for the record. I got you. I'm with you. I hear you. All right. Moving right along. Page uh, five, number 17. Uh, this was where we were uh, mandated to have our one stop early plans in by July 31, and she's extended that. And I believe we, I haven't read it yet. Did I read it? Mm -hmm. I think it's in here somewhere. It's in August 8th, I believe. But we'll see where that is. Okay? All right. But that's where that was right there. Okay? Um, page 18. Seven, we covered that, but let's just look back over that. Seven uh, uh, C require the election official wear face coverings and make face coverings available to voters who do not bring down. Voters will not be required to wear a face covering to vote. Okay. See, that's redundant because if you're going to make the, the face masks available. But then you're not going to require. I didn't mean we're done. It's a contradiction. All right. Well, well, well if, if somebody forgets, yeah, they want one. one. Right. If they want one, we want it. We they want okay. us to have one to allow them to have. That's that's what I see. Mm -hmm. right. it doesn't seem kind of like. Right. Well, it may be though. Yeah. I, I, I know I, when I walk out of sometime and I leave mine. Yeah. Uh, uh, if, I, if I'm close to home, I turn around and go back and get it. But if I'm far away, I, I'm not going to go back. Yeah. And if I go in somewhere, if somebody had a new one. That's what I said, a new one. Right? <laughs> All right, let's move on past that one, okay? We know where we are on that stuff, so right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, we can always come back and revisit when we have to. The second one, y'all, is the, uh, the two-page one. And it's basically, like I said, this is a summary of, of that document that we just covered. Um, if anybody feel up to reading, you can read that. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, it says... Um, it's an emergency order, we know that. Um, the order aims to ensure voters who choose to vote in person have every opportunity, constitutional right without unnecessary risk of health. If we do not take these measures, we risk much longer lines at voting sites. The order mandates the following, among other provisions, all county board of elections must open each early voting site for at least 10 hours on the weekends of October 17, 18, and October 24, 25. Each county board must open at least one early voting site per 20,000 registered voters in the county. County Board of Election may apply for a waiver 
if its proposed plan sufficiently serve the voting population, maintain social distancing, reduce the likelihood of alarm. Any kind of board with only one voting site must arrange for backup sites and backup staff. County boards may open early voting sites before 8 a.m. and remain open later than 7 30 p.m. provided that the sites other than the county board office are in lieu of site. If only open regular business hours are all open at the same time. All county boards must take significant precautions to protect voters and poll workers from the spread of disease. These safeguards include providing social distancing voting sites, including barriers. Uh, between election officials and voters at check in, frequently sanitized common surfaces, including voting booths, provide single use pins to mark ballots, cotton swabs for ballot marking devices, requiring election officials to wear face coverings and masks available to voters who do not bring their own. Voters are not required to wear masks while voting. The county Board of Elections that already submitted unanimous early voting plans to the state board must reconsider their plans and resubmit them in light of the executive order or apply for waiver. The whole area consists of, of stretch of glass and whatever. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, sir. The barrier. Does that consist of uh, plexiglass? Plexiglass. There have been some discussion about that, and I think there will be some for, uh, for our tables. To our poll workers. Mm -hmm. well, what about the markers? Are they going to have? At one point, they were saying everyone should bring his own, but obviously, people no, don't do that. Do that. Oh, man. Not bring them. Um, we don't want to bring because you remember <laughs> what happened when somebody used a felt pen. It right. caused a problem with our voting yeah. machine. Yeah. They are going to supply a voting pen for every voter, and their voters to take that pen from the bus to the voting booth to the trash can or at home. Okay. North Carolina voting will have all voting options available to them in 2020 election. Absentee by mail, Mr. Wooten. Yes. In person early voting mm -hmm. and election day voting. Right. See nothing about mail at home. It's not impossible. I'm not. I'm not saying that. It's a mail at home. That's what Mr. Wooten is saying. He was saying uh, mail. That is a trend. That is a trend now. Who is that in? Okay. Uh, tell her that. Tell her that. Uh, if you need, take one of this. Take this. And tell her she can call in when the meeting is closed due to COVID nineteen. And she's welcome to call in and listen. Okay. okay. I apologize for her not being able to give you, okay? Thank you. Um, all county board must take significant pressure to protect voters and poll workers spread of disease. Safeguard include providing for social distancing and voting sites, including barriers between election officials, voters in check in, frequent sanitized common service, including voting booths. Provide single use pens, they are going to do that. Tomorrow, ballots of cotton swabs for ballot marking device, requiring election officials to wear face coverings and make in mass of daily voters. Okay. Right. This order gives more opportunity for voters this year, assuring they can cast their ballot at a time and in a manner that is most comfortable. The rest of the deal said this order is the right thing to do because no North Carolinian should fear exposure to disease when they cast their ballot. They're going to do it by mail. <laughs> okay. Yes. We discussed it. Yes. All right. That takes care of that. The next document is um, Coronavirus Aid Relief 2020. Um, right. And uh, y'all got that? Everybody got that? Okay. If you know it, I think that's um. It's uh, six pages. The last page is the estimated distribution. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Uh, and I got to highlight what is home county supposed to receive on that last page. $93,909 per act. 
and a minimum of ten thousand dollars for half. Um, that's help America vote. And there may be more money available based on the number of voters or they say it on first come, first serve basis. Along with what we have budgeted and the things that we can use this money for, um, um, if you see the last two pages, one says uh, 2020 Habit Funds Notice of Sub Grant, and the other one says 2020 Care Act Funds Sub Grant. And it kind of gives us some things that we can use this money for. Um, I, I sent um, an email to uh, uh, the county manager and the finance director today um, because there are two ways that we can kind of handle this financing. And if we try to handle this money ourselves, we're going to have to do the reporting ourselves. So we can let them accumulate the money. We receipt to, to them, and they have an accounting part of that. So I sent it to the uh, finance and the, the county manager so that they can kind of give me their direction on that as well. So, so what's the difference between Tier 1 and any other tier? We're, we're in Tier 1. It deals with the poverty level. Okay. Thank you, um, Ms. Armstrong. I thought I knew it, but... But um, if you see on those sheets, everybody got a minimum of ten thousand dollars to have it. But there's there's uh, there's a lot more money available if you qualify for it and if you get in line. Okay, is she okay? Is she okay? Oh, okay. Who is that? She said, she said Ms. Blum. Okay, yes. Okay, I guess. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, what were you talking about? Um, um, I was talking about what you were spending money for. Oh. Did it hit you? Well, I um, <clears throat> want to ask is, the 93000 that is being appropriated to us, yes, ma'am. This is, is this to be spent over and above what the county gives us? Oh yeah, this has nothing to do with our budget. Right, I just want to make sure we don't supplant. Yeah, well, yeah, but, but that $93,999 got to be spent by December 31, 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay, not a problem. So we pay people with it, we do a lot of things with it. Yeah, but there's certain ways. I haven't pay. read this thing. I know, but there's certain ways you can, you can pay for, I like if you're going to do some additional uh, pay per person. It, well, if we already, the budget already got us to pay something. We're going to use some of this money to pay some addition to get people to work. Now, how are we going to train? Our poll, poll workers, how many sessions are we going to have? That's a good question, Ms. Armstrong, and honestly, and I'm not trying to delay that question. I know. But it's way premature for us right now. Because I know we can't do it the way we can. No, we can't, no, we can't bring in those 63 people. No, we cannot. And you're right. And, and so we are thinking about that. And we're thinking about but. You know, I think we got to make sure we find out number one, what size we're going to have. We didn't start to determine how many people we're going to have to have at the precincts. So what we had at the precincts in March, that number is not going to be sufficient. Because you're going to have to have more numbers now because you got to have somebody that's sanitizing. you got to have somebody there. you got to have more uh, curbside people. You know, it's, it's all of this logistics, you got to be worked out, and we we're trying to work through that process. Go fan all these people. We're working on it. Because it's going to be a lot of people. If, if it's any encouragement to, to all of us, uh, I polled uh, all of my judges, chief judges, and uh, we're about 93% 
said today you plan to work. Mm -hmm. Oh, good, good start. Yeah. And I had one said that they just felt that they were just absolutely too old, and she was very honest with me about that. <laughs> and um, so, um, and that's that process we're doing for now. Um, I'm, I'm not going to wait and send out a letter like I do and say, you were appointed and certain times and now it's time for us to work i'm talking to the yeah that's right. Right. Okay. that's right and, and again uh, even at the best of days the last day uh, before the election we're trying to feel some people so we're going to have more of that in the room. <clears throat> yeah of course Mrs. Mrs. um i can't have one let's see um i, I was thinking Excuse me, I need any water. Uh, I actually need to get it for you. Let's see. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would do. Okay. Um, <laughs> what, what avenue? She asked a question about training. The poll workers. What avenue do we come up with so far? We haven't. And the reason I say this is because. This is an ongoing process, and um, in order for me to start a training process, I got to know what I can train them for. Mm -hmm. And so now this, the, the legislators only passed the budget last month, mm -hmm. the 22nd of June, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Okay, that's less than a month. Okay. This document that she sent out was Friday. And so, but once we get this process in place, then we can move to that next process, which is getting our people to work. Right. Okay. We have three months to do it. Well, I, well I'm, I'm going to start as soon as I get my site set up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've mentioned a couple. Zoom. Um, what are these other ones when you have you know, video video reception? Um, that IT person right there, Jack. I know Zoom works, but we do, I use it all the time with the family. Conference call. Conference call. Zoom. 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 Oh, it's oh. all where you can actually sleep. You're on your computer. You're on your computer. They're on their computer yeah. and so forth. In, in, order, in order for Zoom to work for vision, they got to have a camera. Well, they got a camera. The camera's on the computer. Every, I'm saying everybody. So everybody, all my boards may not have a camera. Well, if that's they what got I was going to say. Phone, I, listen, y'all, listen, 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 listen. I understand. Y'all know I understand. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And if technology will allow us to do it that way, mm -hmm. then that's the way we're trying to do what we're trying to do. What I really want to do is to get to one item so we can start that process. Right. And okay. IT going to help me with as much of that that we need to. I just want to get the juice of course. Just the juice is flowing, that's yes, all. Yes, sir, it's flowing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we're rolling. Now, okay, so now we know what the money is. Um, we know what the money is. Um, we know what the money is. Um, this last document right here, don't test that one yet, y'all. Put that aside. That's the one about the new registration. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, the new conference for administration, right? But I want to talk about our early vote information then, so that we can move to them, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. This document was dated July 6th. And this document was in concert with the July 31 deadline. Okay? Alright, you right. know that it's not the same. Okay? Um, So the last two sheets of that document, I think I showed y'all this at the, at the last meeting we had. It's a comparison of one stop and hours required for even and odd new news. And uh, 
and Pete Gary kind of gives us a breakdown of what we do. Okay. Um, uh, 8 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Our hours they are required. Everybody know that. Um, uh, um, early voting start on October 15th and run through the 31st. Um, uh, it's the last Saturday we're here from 8 to 3. And now we got a mandate that's not on this document. <clears throat> Excuse me. That would um, that add 10 hours for the first two weekends that we have here in Lewis, okay? So the first thing we need to do is kind of determine what our workout plan is about that. That would give you 10 hours. If you, if you, if you, 8 to 6 would give you 10 hours. So you can do 8 to 6 both Saturdays. That would give you 10 hours, yes, ma'am. If that's, if that's what y'all want, uh, ready for us to do. That's that what you won't have to worry about Sundays. Now, at least get one day off during the week. Yeah, that's what I Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I think that's where we are now. Is it a final determination of what y'all plan to do about that? And then we'll talk about the sites. See, uh, the annual site, in, in, in here we never had to worry about that because we have voting in this building downstairs. So we'll be okay with the annual site. This office will be open the duration of whatever is open for the month outside. <clears throat> we talked about that too, and we just had a one to stop signing office codes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so what's what we're doing about the Saturdays? What we're doing about the 10 hours? Well, that would certainly be the easiest. I mean, otherwise, we have to have people to man it and uh, Another place to open. Well, I think we go with the Saturdays. But I, if if we were not in COVID, I would say split it up yeah. Saturday and Sunday because people leave church and to vote, but nobody sent it to them. I mean, people are having church. I was saying yeah, you're right. How they're not going to the they're not going to the meeting. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are in the concert and uh, 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 the two Saturdays, 10 hours. Everybody here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's where we are. All right. All right. Any motion? Oh, we will need a motion, yes. Okay. Okay. And we'll take it right in. Okay. Can I get a motion for the uh, voting hours on Saturday? I'll make a motion. For the 10 hours on Saturday. Okay, ten, 10. Okay, it has been 10 hours each weekend. Each Saturday. Yeah. Okay, no, each first two Saturdays. Uh -huh, can I get a okay. Saturday? Yeah, I just want to make sure we're supposed to clarify because the last Saturday is 8 to 3 by law. Okay, okay it's been moved properly second that we will observe 10 hours of voting on the first. And the second Saturday of early voting. Right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's been. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. It's, it's finished. Okay. <laughs> okay. The, um, the one that's. Um, the last Saturday, we will reserve the mandate. Yes, so we don't need to Eight to three. Now, the election hours for early voting uh, during the week is eight to seven thirty. Okay, um, that's that's the hours that are mandated. Now, but they gave y'all options on that. Yeah, you can open. You can start voting at seven thirty. Um, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Is there? a specific number of hours that we're required for those other periods. The mandate is 8 to 7.30. Right. Yeah, so you got to do that. You have no choice in that matter. And if one one-stop site is open for 8 to 
all three must be open on the 27th. Okay, so with just the 8 to 7 30 and the 10 hours for the first two Saturdays and then the last Saturday, we will meet the minimum number of hours that they specify that we have to have. You have met the maximum required hours. Okay. And the maximum required hours. Right. That's what I'm going to mention. Of course. <clears throat> All right, so we okay with the uh, the hours? Mm -hmm. Okay. We have uh, three sites in the Marsh Farmer. You don't know where they were. They were a secret to nobody. Okay. Where are we at? At the social services here in Phantom. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. The social service building. We need one room there um, called um, the director of battle said that she's going to open up the second room right beside there. They had a petition to give us uh, space to uh, social distance. We are planning um, with the help of IT to open up the entire auditorium. We still got to engulf it. You got to engulf it some way because you can't have that big space with folk floating around there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to expand what we need to expand. Okay. Now, the library in Pantops, now you know that set up. They may need to move. Well, I mean, I, that, that's, I, 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 I thought about that. Me and uh, the a librarian, Mr. Neary, went down there and looked at it. He has, um, he has made as much space available in that area as possible. I've also gone down and looked in the town of Pine Tops for an additional building that would host us for 17 days. We got Carver School. I don't know how we can do a school for Oh, you're talking about so the early vote? Yes, ma'am. Oh, you're not just the number right. the third. Okay. Oh, right. wow. Okay. Um, there was one other place. I don't want to name the place yet. There was one other place that came up with some of the citizens there. Um, but we're not sure that that place would be sufficient for all the voters. Okay, so you've given Oh yes, I've down, been down to talk to the town manager, um, Ms. Best, and she and I have looked around in the town for vacancies in our eyes, mm -hmm. and um, there was nothing that we could find in retrospect. Um, so, what we plan to do today, I hope, is to finalize our early vote sites. And if we find something different in time talks before I submit, then I can do a call for y'all uh, and see if we can get an agreement to move it. I wouldn't want to move it unless it is safe, first of all. Secondly, got the space. And thirdly, then, it does not that you mean any voters. I think that's the best way to do it. Okay? All right. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. I'm asking that. Now, how many how many uh, voting booths do we usually have? There were two or three. Where are they? Oh, I'm sorry. The library. Contacts? Mm -hmm. I think we said about six there. I know you got some. Yeah, yeah about six. And then, yeah, oh, I, I know. Okay. I know it's at about six. Okay. And if you just kind of give me an idea, you walk in the library. There's uh, some people in there. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. A space that people can walk. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the DS two hundred is here going out the door, and everybody else is over here working. Mm -hmm. But the workers got visibility to the DS two hundred. And there's nothing in between them. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice. I'm just wondering. Social distance. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, normally we have the voting places closer than six feet. So. 
Well, along with that, um, I think it says social distancing, but I don't know that it's a requirement to be six feet. I mean, that's what they said, so it's just because, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know how every precinct that we got on Election Day is going to be able to have every one of our workers six feet apart. We're going to have to have some type of petition. Well, right, that's our plan, mm -hmm. you know, that's our plan, you know, is... And of course, the state is helping us with that. They're going to they gonna send us our supplies to the emergency management and we'll be here on the site. Okay? Okay. All right, good, right, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so are, are we good on um, the four sites? Okay. Somewhere along there, I gave y'all, there was something in there that had a signature card. Y'all see that? Signatures? Okay, I can't find it. Oh, here it is. I got it. I got it. I got it. Thank you. I got it. Thank you. Since we have all of our board members here, can we everybody get out one of that one of those uh sheets? It's like that. It's the it's the signature card. I want us to know what we're doing. Together. Where is this? That document that has the um, the one of the records. Yeah, right there. I think it's right there. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's okay. Okay, it says one stop implementation plan signature sheet. This signature sheet must be signed by all county board members who voted for this one stop site plan. Once the board members and director have signed, please upload the signature, signature sheet to FileZilla and submit the online form. Um, we, the undersigned board members, and uh, agreeing on a unanimous plan approved during the public meeting. The date of the meeting will be today. Mm -hmm. Y'all have agreed on three sites. Y'all have agreed on 10 hours for the two additional Saturdays. We agreed to go from 8 to 7.30. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes. yes. Okay. All right, Ms. Chairman, if you will, sign one of those sheets in black. And we're going to pass it around, and I really need to go on right now. I have to do it, okay? It's just about the same channel. And um, okay. I'd like to have more than one of those signs. I'd like to have at least two signs. Just in case there's a change. I'd just like for somebody to feel that absolutely. Oh, I'm going to fill it out. I'm, but I'm going to sign it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Because I yes, thought you wanted me to. No, I'm going to fill it out. Yes, I'm going to fill it out. I was just reading out what we've done. Okay. Because, see, if you got a unanimous plan, you're going to have to have one plan. If it's nine in your games, you gotta have two plays. I don't know how you take it. It went wherever mine would be. Okay.
the uh, that document, that last document about the uh, the virtual conference. Mm -hmm. Say uh, there is a agenda in there. I saw it. Um, yeah. And it is all day Monday and all day Tuesday. Well, I don't think it's a necessary requirement for you. It says if you want to get um, credits towards uh, your CME, whatever, if you want to try to uh, get certification down the road, you get credit. But for the board to have to be on that um, call that long for all day, more days. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Does anyone sign up? I haven't signed up yet. Does anyone want to sign up? I don't know. Okay. Is this the mandatory training that we have to do every year? This, this is training every year. Yes, sir. Yeah, we do every year. Yes. Choice, then, huh? uh -huh. But you see, we can't tell, but is this online or is this? Um, virtual conference, right? And they they are and they are going to uh, provide uh, some um, additional information uh, in terms of how they're going to do it. The deadline for registration is Friday. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I can't imagine staying on a phone that long. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a phone call, but I don't know how they're going to do it just yet because they didn't tell us. But, 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 but I, I think, I really think that it might be good for y'all to sign up. God. And I say that. I'm going to sign up. Right. There you go. I am going to sign go. up. There you go. There you go. I plan to sign up. I just want to, wanted to have an idea how it. it was going to be done. There's an old man yeah. or telephone. Oh, that is true. Well, I signed Well, and I think you can sign up, but still, they hadn't told us. It says um, they, they want, they're going to do, it's, it surely is not going to be visual. <laughs> We're not, we're not going to be able to see you, and you're going to be able to see them. Yeah. You may be able to see what they're doing. Okay. Okay. I think we'll be able to see that. And it says something about, I read something about, you know, maybe they need to get together and like, watch it on uh, TV together. Like that. And that, that's up to y'all. If you want to use this room, you're welcome to do that. So you got a social distance the way we go. Is this the same? Thing that the legislature uses. Yeah, uh, I, I, I listen to them I, sometimes. I, I, I'm not sure, uh, Mr. Williams. You do listen to them? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I'm not sure. <coughs> well, uh, 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 Jack, you got any thoughts about what might be happening? It sounds to me like it's going to be like a the delivery of something that you can see on the screen. Actually, it'd be about six hundred. It sounds to me like if you wanted to do it in this room, we could up the computer to that TV and we would log into the meeting and now could all see and hear what's going on. That's a long day. It's a long day when you're that in person. Yeah, that's right. And you're just going to have to. You know, go do something else when you need to. Right. Yeah, I'm so mm -hmm. We're doing what we can. Because this is new for all of us. We're just trying to adapt. That's right. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to do the best we can to get through the process. I think we'll be fast. All right, well, if you want to sign up, there's a link on the computer. You can hit that link and get signed up, okay? All right. All right. So it's like it. Okay. Okay.
All right. Um, that's all I got for today. Okay. Well, any board members have anything? Um, can people on the line ask a question or make a suggestion? Well, what I am going to do is say yes, and I'll explain to you why I say that, because on our agenda, public comments are at the very beginning of the meeting. Yes, so, and, so, I, and so, I heard it when you, when you asked for public comment, but my statement is in regards to something that you spoke about in the meeting later on. I just wanted to 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 well, in. Excuse me, please. Would you identify yourself? Sure, I'd be glad to. My name is Martha Johnson with the Edgecombe County Democratic Party. Martha Johnson. <laughs> okay, I thought I recognized that voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just want to, I wanted to um, ask, you were talking about a site in Pine Tops for the early voting, I, I think that's what you were saying, and I was going to suggest maybe if they could utilize the back of Pine's Chapel Church, because that, um, it's a really big uh, area back there in the back of the church that's not normally utilized. Uh, you know, unless it's a funeral or something like that, mm -hmm. and that be a possibility. And also, the, the there's an interest the back part of the gym at Carver School, and that gym is so big it may be um, that you know something could be set up that is partitioned that um, you wouldn't even have to use the old gym. But anyway, just wanted to throw that out as. A possibility for the pine top site. We're talking about 17 days. Talking about early voting. Early voting for 17 days. The think Pine Chapel will be available at Fellowship Hall for 17 days. Well, you know, like I said, I, I don't know for sure. It's just a suggestion, but I, I know that it's a, a, a part of the church and, uh, that is not utilized normally on an ongoing basis. And if we continue to be um, restricted in our movement um, by the state, it, you know, it could possibly be a site that, that could be used. Uh, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there as a possibility. I don't know. Thank you so much because we... <laughs> and, and then I got one question because I'm so sorry I, I, I couldn't hear everything clearly. Uh, what was the statement that was made in regards to uh, mail-in voting? Or has it been approved, or has it not been approved, or what? I wanted to, I wanted to get it on record that we at least discussed who we thought about it. Yeah, Miss Johnson, this is Jerry Spurrier. Yeah. I'm doing good OPR. Yeah, well, thank you for your call, and thank you for your comments, and thank you for your recommendations. Now, we have, by law, three ways that we can vote in the state of North Carolina. And, and that's the way that we've been voting now, I know since 2000. We can do early voting, one-stop sites. We can do absentee. Uh -huh. Our absentee by mail has changed tremendously. Used to have, when it first came out, you had to have an excuse to vote absentee by mail. Now all you gotta do is request it. And, uh, and then same day, I mean, excuse me, we do same day registration, which can be done at early vote sites, and then election day. But so far as any other mail-in vote, we don't have that in the state of North Carolina that I am aware of. Okay. Okay. All okay. right. It's, it's just something that I, I've been hearing about, you know, and I didn't know what the status of that was uh, as related to North Carolina. 
I, I do have one uh, last question. You said, I thought I heard somebody say that the deadline for early or deadline for voter registration is Friday. No, ma'am. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. We didn't say that. I'm glad you didn't hear that. No, I did say that. But that's registration for our uh, conference. A conference. Yeah. That's not, yeah. Not, not voter registration. Yeah, that's for a conference that the board plans to attend. But uh, the day. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> the day for registration, uh, my guess, and I don't know it, I should know, but I don't, I think it's someone who be. Um, um, Probably early part of October. Okay, okay, all right. After, Great. After that, uh, then you can do um, same day voter registration. But then okay. The for, for the um, voter registration deadline is during the 30 days prior to the election. Okay, all right. And how could, can people just still pick up? Um, Voter registration document from your office? We have, were told, Ms. Johnson, by, uh, mm -hmm. by the state that if anybody wanted to do a voter registration drive to contact mm -hmm. to contact the state board of election. Well, that hadn't been fruitful. When I told somebody that and they called the state, somehow or another the state didn't have those available. So what we're doing is if somebody requests some, we're making them available to what we have. We can't give oh, okay. them all, everything, but we can give some of what we do have and share it and share it a lot. Okay? Okay. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Well, thank y'all so much for all you do. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, where are we now? On the adjournment? <laughs> On the adjournment? Thank you. Okay, we're adjourned.